Hi everyone, I'm Rudolf from MMO Studios and today I will show you how to shoot this engagement ring using this equipment to get this. First of all, I will talk about the lights I'm using and how to set them up. So as you can see, I have four lights set up. Top light, underneath light, and two side lights. The top light is illuminating the, the head of the ring, the, the central stone. Then I have two side lights, and the side lights are illuminating the shoulders of the ring. And then I have one underneath light, which is illuminating the, the, the side of the shank. The, 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 the ring will be angled slightly, so I won't be able to see the, the, the other side of the shank. I'm using 40 cm by 40 cm softboxes, small softboxes, because I have a small item to shoot. As you know, the, the, the bigger the so light source, the softer the light. But for jewelry, I want to achieve quite harsh light, so that's why I'm using a relatively small softbox. Um, I can also control the, the, the harshness of the light by moving the light source away from the um, object. Um, but in this case, I will keep the, all four softboxes very close to the object because this is a ring, very shiny, very reflective. So obviously I want to get rid of the reflections. So that's why I need to find that perfect ratio. Um, so the light softboxes are not too close but still produce quite harsh light which I can do with these softboxes because they are quite small. So as you can see this underneath light is slightly further away um, uh, that's because I want to get uh, especially harsh light on the on the side of the shank uh, whereas I need quite even light on top of the ring because there are a lot of small stones and I need to illuminate quite nicely so that's why the, the, the top light compared to the underneath light is a little bit closer. The distance between the, the, the side lights and the object is uh, the same, identical, because the, the, sh the sh shoulders of the item are identical as well so and I want to get the same amount of light on each of the shoulders so that's why in terms of power, they are the same, and in terms of distance, they are the same as well. I'll be using my Nikon D850 full frame camera with 105 millimeter macro lens, which gives me very close up focus. The camera is on a tripod because I will be focus stacking, so the camera has to be static. I'll be using a shutter release cable rather than pressing the shutter release button because obviously I want to avoid camera shake and uh, if you focus stack I would definitely recommend using a shutter release cable. Right, when, when it comes to shooting one important thing is to get the settings right in camera. For jewelry photography I use, uh, I do usually focus stack and I will be using a large depth of field, no, my normal f-stop on my lens is about 16 to 18 depending on what I'm shooting but in this case I will be using f-16 uh, and that gives me quite large depth of field. Uh, I will be focus stacking taking about 10 to 12 images on one ring but before I start shooting I need to set the lights. Um, so usually I start with one light and when I'm happy, then I switch on the other light and then the no another light and then I can start shooting. So first, obviously, I need to position the ring. So I will be using gloves. Gloves are very important in jewelry photography because fingerprints can ruin everything. So you need to make sure that you polish the ring, uh, the jewelry. It's nice. Give it a nice polish, you know. Then I will try to position it. It will be slightly angled. Once the ring is positioned, I will take a couple of test shots with one light only. So I can see on the big screen whether I need to increase or decrease the power on this light. 
to get the right exposure. Then I will repeat it on all four lights. I will turn on the side light. I will take a test shot again, so I can see whether the power is right on this light. Then I will repeat it again on the other side light. When I'm happy with the, these three lights, I turn on the underneath light. Okay, so so once the lights are set at the right power, I can start shooting. I will be focus stacking as I already said, which means that the camera will be static, it can't move. I will be using a shutter release cable to avoid the camera shake. Um, and I will be taking about 12 to 15 photos and on each photo, I will refocus, so we change the focus. And those 15 photos I will put together in a software called Helicon, which I will show you later in the video, to get a pin sharp image from top to bottom. Otherwise, if I take just one photo, the top of the ring or whichever part of the ring I focus on will be in focus and the rest will be blurred out. But I want everything in focus from front to back. So that's why I will be focus stacking. I'm gonna take those 15 photos now and then later on in the video I will show you how I stack them together in a software called Helicon. Okay, now when we have all the pictures, we can stack them together in, in a software called Helicon Focus. So I've taken actually 22 photos, but it doesn't mean that the process will be more complicated. It will be as simple as if you use 15 photos only. So I'm dropping all the photos in, in, in the software, in Helicon software, I click render, and in a couple of seconds, I have the stacked photo as you can see it's pin sharp from top to bottom now i just need to save it i will save it on my desktop as a tiff file and here we go we have the photo now i'm ready to edit it in this video i've shown you how to photograph an engagement ring with the equipment i have here how to set up the lights how to focus stack to get a pin sharp image from top to bottom and in the next episode I will show you how to edit that photograph in Photoshop to make it perfect.